the real song where that comes from, uh, no one knows. That is grace. That is a gift, and uh, uh, that is that is not yours. That's the song that got me into Leonard Cohen. Probably a little later than a lot of people. I mean, he's been around a long time, but there's a little movie called Pump Up the Volume, and that song was featured heavily in it. And I remember seeing it, that movie, and being blown away by the movie, but being blown away by that song. I mean, what is this song? What is this voice? What is this music? Like, I literally could not comprehend what I was listening to. I just knew I loved it. It was the voice and the music of Leonard Cohen. Everybody knows the war is over. So I had to have it. Everybody. So I went to my library and rented, I guess it was the CD. Now, it would have been, yeah, it was, it was on I'm Your Man. So I, well, rented, borrowed the CD. And that's how I got the song. And it blew my mind. And then there were a couple of cover albums like uh, based on Leonard Cohen's music, Tower of Song and I'm Your Fan. I'm Your Fan had R.E.M., Tower of Song had Bono, two of my favorite artists. So I was just, it just spiraled out, out from there, how much I love Leonard Cohen. And then I got really into his music and his poetry, his writing. He's one of the most beloved musicians artist to come out of Canada, revered around the world. And right here is his childhood home. This is where he grew up in Montreal. Right here, Leonard Cohen. So it's this house right here on this little street, not too far from downtown Montreal. And these girls out front, this, they live here, one of the girls, and they're, it's their birthday party. And I said, happy birthday, explain what I was doing. And they are very cool about it. They know the history of the house. I think that's awesome. So you can see the house right there. That's his house. And his father's funeral was held inside that house. I'm gonna tell you more about the history of Leonard Cohen, what I know. I just know that he started out as a country singer. I did not know that. And then he got heavily into poetry. Yeah, he started out playing country music in Montreal cafes in a band called the Buskin Boys. And their shows were usually traditional numbers of square dances. And it was still poetry, though, that mostly consumed Leonard Cohen. And he attended McGill University to study English and graduated in 1955. And the following year, the university published his first collection called Let Us Compare Mythologies, which received great reviews but did not sell that well, setting a precedent for... Leonard Cohen's future. His next book was published in 1961. It was called The Spice Box of the Earth, and it was a critical and commercial success. And combined with the royalties from that and a Canadian writing grant and a small family inheritance, it allowed him to buy a modest house on the Greek island of Hydra, where he would live on and off for much of the next seven years and write and swim and sail. Okay, now we're going to go to where Leonard Cohen's house in Montreal is, but first we're going to make a stop at something really cool. It's right in the middle of downtown Montreal. That's where Leonard Cohen grew up, right there in that house. I love stuff like that. I love music history the most. Out of everything I do on my channel, music is the most important thing to me, and music history. Something like that just blows my mind. I love it. Leonard Cohen lived there. So 
So this is Crescent Street in Montreal, which is really big and popular for bars, as you can see. Patios are all open. A lot of people wear masks. Some aren't, but most are. I'm not right now, but I am when I'm social distancing right now. But I will be if anybody gets a little too close. Just to be on the safe side. Here, there's a giant mural of Leonard Cohen based on a picture that his daughter took, Lorca Cohen. And this was commissioned uh, for the first anniversary of his death, and it's right here in the heart of Montreal. So I'm on my way now to his home in Montreal, and I thought I'd stop and show you it. Check it out, it's incredible to see in person. Well, coming to Leonard Cohen's main house in Montreal, looks like I'm definitely somewhere close in the right area. There's Mr. Cohen in this window here. Not sure who these people are, but there he is again up top, right there. This is a location I've looked up on Google Maps a million times, even before um, Leonard Cohen passed away, I wanted to come see his house. It's well known where it is. And after he passed, so many people came here. The, the, this little street here was flooded in downtown Montreal. In this park, people were all here outside, right outside of Leonard Cohen's house, right here. He didn't pass away here, he passed away in Los Angeles, but this was his main Montreal residence right here. Very cool, very funky. Apparently he did a lot. Majority, I'm not sure, of his writing in later years in the kitchen of that house right there. He also had a house in Greece. I believe Greece, Montreal, and Los Angeles were his primary residences. But he never lost his love for Montreal and he frequented a lot of these bars and delis around here. Leonard Cohen's neighborhood right here. In his later years, sadly, he was swindled out of much of his retirement fund by his manager. So he went back out on the road. Kind of came out of semi-retirement and to make back the money. And it sort of seemed to me to inspire a, a little bit more of a creative uh, period form as well because just a few like days before he passed away, he released an album with a song, uh, You Want It Darker. And I love that album. I think it's a, one of his best. Yeah, You Want It Darker was released just like two weeks before he passed away. And then, so it's 15 studio albums in total. and One was released posthumously. I believe uh, You Want It Darker, a lot of it was with his son, Adam. And that was in, who's a musician in his own right. And that was done mostly in his Los Angeles house. So I've told you about the beginning of Leonard Cohen's career and the ending of Leonard Cohen's career. In the mid 60s, he became interested in the Greenwich Village folk scene and Judy Collins recorded two of his songs, Suzanne and Dress Rehearsal Rag. And that's the same year that he began performing in public. He had moderate success in the 60s and 70s. And then in 1984, he released various positions with the song Hallelujah that Jeff Buckley in the 90s would go on to cover and would introduce him to a whole new audience. And then he had a hit with I'm Your Man in 1988, which has the songs First We Take Manhattan and Everybody Knows. In 2008, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And in 2010, he was honored with a Grammy for Lifetime Achievement. And now I'm gonna take you to the final resting place of Leonard Cohen, which is actually a, probably about a five minute drive. Not too far, it's just right up that way. It's not too far at all. Pay my respects and you can as well. It's Mr. Leonard Cohen. Okay, let's go.
Okay, so here I am on the grounds of uh, Shar Hashemayim Cemetery, which is in that, it's kind of part of the same cemetery where uh, Dino Bravo is, Rene Angelil. It's right, it's a huge cemetery. There's various composers. There's, there seems to be a Jewish section, Italian section, French section. Uh, this is the Jewish section where Leonard Cohen is. And I'm gonna see if I can find his grave. I see a Cohen right here, but I don't think that's it. I, I've kind of got an idea of how it looks, but we have to wander around a little bit, take a look, and uh, see if we can find Mr. Cohen. And that was not difficult at all to find. Here is Mr. Cohen. And these are his parents here. Try to figure out which one are his parents. So here are Leonard Cohen's parents. Uh, this is Nathan Cohen, his father, in loving memory of, and in loving memory of Masha Cohen, his mother. And I believe his sister is buried here as well. She died, I think, 2014. I can't seem to find her at all. I'm gonna take a look on the other side. But a lot of people ask me about um, bringing rocks to a cemetery. And like I said, it's a Jewish tradition. And as you can see, that's uh, quite prevalent here. I brought one for Mr. Cohen here. Put that right on top. Take a look on the other side here. Now Rabinovich Cohen here. Edgar Horace Cohen. And she died 2014, but I don't seem to see her. Hmm. If you're looking to find uh, Leonard Cohen when you come to Montreal, you come to the park, but come to the Mount Royal and Foray Boulevard, right there where they intersect at that entrance right there. Come right up, you park anywhere around here, and then come right through here, and the Cohen will be right there. One of the easier graves to find. From what I know about Esther Cohen, Leonard's sister, they became, they were, they had a nice relationship throughout his life, but as they got older, they became closer. It's too bad, I'm not sure where she is here. Lena Cohen died in Los Angeles. She died in Manhattan in 2014. Leonard Cohen died in 2016, as I've said. And uh, he did have cancer, but it was after a fall and he died in his sleep. November 7th, 2016.
see people leave more than just rocks is letters. Lots of letters. Pens, probably poetry I would assume. Left for Mr. Cohen. Matches, a little guitar. Some nice things. Let's put this letter up here. So it hasn't fallen down. Where? So, from the grave of Leonard Cohen, someplace I've always wanted to visit. And I also see so much of Leonard Cohen's Montreal. Not a lot to me, means a lot to you. <sighs> it's really bittersweet. Wow. Okay. Peace. Peace to Leonard Cohen and his family resting here peacefully, I hope.